Here around uh, Second Chain, all this area of the shell, a lot of fish are starting to show up around these shell bars and shell reefs and pads now. Up here in Ayers, all this area here has got a lot of that good stuff that's there that's weightable and or if you don't want to get in the water, you can fish it from your boat. Drifting it or using your trolling motor if you so choose. Ayers dug out the same thing. You got this big old nice long reef that's right along in here. Tons of shell that's all back in this area here. And there's trout that are showing up on a lot of these areas. So what you want to be able to do is uh, just be able to work the shell, work the edges, get in and around all that kind of stuff. Bait's prevalent. It's everywhere. You don't have to worry about that at all. Uh, sometimes, look, you know, depending on what our winds and everything's doing, uh, you know, it may dirty up the water pretty good for you to that degree. But again, uh, if you know, if you want to use a popping cork and put that uh, bait up underneath there and let it float and do its thing with that, or use a little bit of chartreuse, which uh, if you've listened to any of the videos in the past, you know, I'm not a big fan of chartreuse tails, but in this particular case, when you got that dirtier water, having a chartreuse on there comes in handy for you or scent. You know, if you've got some of your bait that's scented, it works pretty good as well. Um, primarily trout have been hanging in around this every, every once in a while we'll pull out a little black drum nothing great but primarily trout are in and around these types of areas and if you know of other areas that are uh anywhere in our base systems right now any of the estuaries that's got shell or shell pads or reefs or whatever uh, there's fish that are on those or you'll find the fish in and around one of those reefs somewhere um, so if you want to transition out of here Go, go up toward, toward False Live Oak, in and around that area, all that the brick and the rock that's up around there. But we've primarily been hanging out in and around the, the reefs up here, then Ayers Bay, and then, uh, of course, Ayers dug out on either side, depending on what your wind's doing and where it's at. You know, Rattlesnake has got some areas on it that's got some nice shell in and around those areas. So working all those areas as well has been good. Primarily things we've been, been throwing – Again, still 16th ounce jig heads. We're not going away from that anytime soon. Uh, of course, the other thing, too, to take into account for, we've got a lot of extra water that's in our system right now, so uh, take that into account. And maybe some areas that you haven't been able to get to or maybe to get your boat to to have a shot at are now in play. Now, how long that's going to last, I'm not too sure. It kind of depends on what that system is doing out there in Florida. Um, and, again, now we're on the backside, transition away from the full moon that we've had for the last couple of days. So take that into consideration as far as your uh, profile size. Uh, we've been throwing burner shads mainly. It's a little bit of the original and down south. Been throwing a little bit of the knock and tail. But in the knock and tail, we've been throwing the three and a quarter inch, which is real, real close to what the uh, burner shad is. So that's been very productive for us. And uh, white ice has been pretty good. Purple rain's been pretty good. Uh, uh, acid rain. Twisted Tea, Big Papa Pearl, uh, the ones that we've been primarily throwing for a while have, have continued to be productive for us. Uh, smoke in the uh, knock and tail flavor in that three and a quarter inch has been pretty good for us as well. Of course, in the marker 54, a lot of these fish that we're catching to see either around the shell or up in the grass edges, you know, they're starting to spit a lot of these shrimp up. So if you see that and you got some of those marker 54 jerk shrimp or the popcorn shrimp, it'd be a great thing to put on there and throw during that time frame. Uh, Around this full moon, man, the, the, the majors and minors have been money for us. Uh, the midday bite hasn't been terrible. You know, I've, I've spoke I kind of against that for a while as far as, but here recently the, the midday majors have been have been okay. Uh, there's there's fish to be had, but it's strictly in and around that time frame. Anything outside of that, boy, get, get ready. You're going to do a lot of practice casting. Uh, the majors, or excuse me, the minors, uh, whether you get up early or you want to fish it late or be prime time for you right now with that moon setting in the morning and of course rising in the evening right now is a good target time for you. So remember, take those into consideration. Pay attention to what our weather systems are going to be doing because we're going to have a little bit of everything everywhere happening this coming week. Here from the Mott, all the way down in Long Reef Bend, all the way up to Jaybird, heading all the way back down to Spalding Bite, all that area there. Anywhere on those shorelines, we've we have found bait work and we have found some fish working somewhat to a degree in there. They haven't all been great fish, but there have been fish that's been caught in in these areas. Uh, another area too, just like in the last video, I just talked about the reefs, like here in Spalding Reef, reefs up here by the ICW, uh, Jaybird Reef, all those areas, those fish are in and around these reefs right now. Uh, they're starting to really show up there and they're starting to produce pretty good numbers around those. 
Uh, again, you may have to catch eight or nine of them before you catch a, a quality fish or catch a, a current slot fish right now, but they're in and around that. So if you get out of there and wade those particular areas, you'll give yourself an opportunity. Uh, up here on Long Reef, all this area up here from there to the ICW and back around, depending on what kind of wind you got, back around to the Mott up in here in the, on the point as you head back around toward, toward Allen's. Uh, lots of opportunity down in these things in here. If, you know, if you're not finding them in and around the reefs on that particular day that you get to fish, then you've got the other options of fishing the mouths, the back lake mouths that dump out into Aransas Bay. And those are always great options there. Uh, again, right now, currently, we have a lot of extra water in here. It's pushed a lot of water into our back bays and our back lake areas, so some of those areas are really starting to light up for us, and it gives you opportunities while that water level is up. So if you're able to be on the water during this time frame, take advantage of that and get back in some of these. Uh, if you're not sure about it and never run it before in your boat, that's fine. Just drop your boat on the outside and walk up into these areas. It's very easy to do, and you can fish your way into about lots of these areas. Uh, some of its areas are somewhat squishy. Some are a little less squishy than others, and some are pretty firm depending on what area you get into, but you have an opportunity somewhere in and around these areas. Again, uh, we've found redfish back in these areas, we've found black drum back in these areas, found some decent trout, but a lot of dink trout back in these areas as well. Uh, just Again, you have to just take that into consideration what's going on. We're into our summertime uh, pattern, it's, it's just getting better and better for us as far as that goes. Uh, you know, we've got weather systems that's going to be moving in and out of us. You all, you got to have to take all that kind of stuff into consideration on how you approach and what your game plan is. Remember, always have your game plan in place and have you a plan B or a C if, if need be. Uh, again, big moons in play. Even though we're on the backside of it, we're still throwing small profile baits. Down south in the burner shads, uh, different flavors. There's probably about four, maybe five different flavors we've been throwing that's been very consistent for us. You know, Twisted Tea, Big Papa Pearl. Uh, purple rain any of your darks have been good depending on what your water clarity is now if you're getting back in some of these it's got some of that really gin clear water because we've had some really nice calm mornings so those water that water gets clean in a hurry so like your firecracker your acid rain mud minnow have all been pretty good dirty tequila uh, mirror lure the uh, little johns in both the uh, gold and red glitter and kitchen sink have been very good in those water conditions as well um, glass minnow in the knock and tail and in the smoke flavor as well of course it's a smaller profile bait and it's really good for this time right now as we're dealing with the big moon that's in play uh also you know a lot of these back lake areas that's got lots of grass and the grass edges and stuff we see shrimp working in those that's where that marker 54 either the jerk shrimp or the or the uh, popcorn shrimp have been very good for us and to us during that time frame so it's just another great option for you to have it as in your you know in your arsenal as far as your wade box goes uh, again, majors and minors, majors and minors, majors and minors have been very, 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 very productive for us. I can't stress that enough to you. If you are not fishing in and around those time frames, you're you're having you're going to have struggle days. It's just going to happen. Um, very productive time frame, especially in this big moon phase. Uh, we get in on that, that minor, especially if you're you know if you're not getting on it early and you're catching the back end of it, you're still catching a few fish. Uh, and then of course when we get into the major time frame, it's been very productive for us as well. So just reiterating that to you. So it just depends on what you want to do and how you want to approach it. Uh, so to set up your fishing day, just make sure that the, one of those time frames is incorporated into it. Up here in St. Charles, across from the boat ramp to the east shoreline, all the way up to Egg Point, all the way down to Boy Scout, Big and Little Sharp, uh, Cavasso Creek, even, even all the way back to the back here in St. Charles. There's been opportunities in different locations. Uh, I mentioned all those areas, you know, cow chip as well. I mentioned all these areas because we've, we have found and caught fish in different parts of these areas at different points and times of the week uh, or a day. Uh, so you want to kind of just lay your plan out on how you want to approach this area and how you want to get to it, how you want to fish it, depending on what your windage does. Some of the areas set up better than others. You know, I love to fish Cavasso Creek, depending on what our wind is, is whether if it's a east or a west or north. However, there's there's always a section of that particular area down there that sets up well for a particular wind, whatever that is, on a particular given day. Uh, we found fish just periodically up and down the shorelines on either side. You know, uh, Boy Scout camp over that down in, uh, of course, the Little Devil Bayou that's down in there. We've we found some fish down in that area. Uh, 
course, you know, if you know enough about it, there's little creeks and offshoots and little back lake, little mouths that, that dump into and all that area down in there. So those are all been productive at different points in times, but it's a, a point of emphasis that you want to be able to try to fish when you can. Uh, egg point on either side based on what our wind is doing. So we get, you know, if you get a nice south southeast or southwest wind, then you can fish it either on the windward side or the leeward side. Either side has been pretty good. Uh, some days they produce, some days it does not. So you just kind of have to locate and see what the pattern is telling you to do. Uh, come back and around on this other side toward down, uh, down cow chip. This whole shoreline here, you got a nice hard packed sand bottom there. It's got a little drop to it, and you got some grass flat that's on the sides of it toward the shore. And of course, this other side over here that you can come all the way up toward uh, Ernest Point there and back around toward the uh, uh, oyster farm that's back over there, or the oyster reefs that they put in. Those have all have produced fish at different points and times and they've been pretty good. So it allows you to fish a lot of different areas in a short span if you put in over there at St. Charles Boat Ramp or if you go out of Goose Island, whichever you like, uh, you give yourself opportunities. Uh, up and in and around the reefs toward the front, up toward Bird Point and uh, East Pocket and all that area there, there's been some fish that's been hanging around that shell up in there. So it's always another good area for you to try and see if fish are holding for you on a particular day that you get to fish. Uh, again, main things we've been throwing in and around this 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 big moon is the burner shads, the small profiles. Also, another one popped into my brain here just a few seconds ago when I was thinking about this is the soft dine or the mirror dine, the smaller version of it, has been pretty good. You know, it's a short stubby little bait uh, and it's been fairly productive so in and around that big moon that's another bait that you can chunk in there uh, to to uh, toss at these fish to see if they can get them interested in eating for you uh, again the the baits that have previously mentioned the big papa twisted tea uh, white ice all those flavors have been good and any other flavor that you've that you've thrown in the past that, that i may not have mentioned if you have that in your box and it's a darker flavor depending on what that water clarity is throw it uh, the biggest thing right now is so much is the wa is the size of the bait. We don't want to throw anything super big uh, during this this phase right now. So uh, if you want to kind of test the bounds of that a little bit, do it in around one of the majors and minors and see if that if you get a little bit better production fish from that. Um, we have found some of these fish in just a tad bit deeper water. You know, maybe the uh, waist deep areas that we've located some fish in those areas over a little bit of grass and some shell mix. Uh, but the shell reefs have produced for us pretty well. Again, grass is always going to be a key thing, especially over hard packed sand during this time frame, moving into the summertime. Those fish are going to migrate in and around that kind of stuff, and that's where they want to be. Uh, so just, again, look for your bait work in these areas. Pay attention to what your weather systems are doing. You know, uh, St. Charles is pretty protected, a little estuary, depending on which where the wind is coming from. You can find a protected area in and around those things. And, again, majors and minors have been the key thing. Uh, continue to... to uh, fish those time frames if you're able to be on the water during that during that time that will that will production level go way up for you if you can uh, just uh, pay attention to what your patterns are and what's going on with it